just working. Um, you, you, you've just heard, you've just heard from a master craftsperson, and there was even, um, there was even great wisdom in the asides, and um, um, and um, um, so it was, it was a talk really to be um, to be treasured. Now, I'm going to, if anything, reinforce reinforce all of the suspicion that exists in this room toward authority. Uh, because after having been out in Yenevelt and complained about uh, not opening up the discussion to this group, now that authority is in my hands, I'm not going to let you talk. Uh, uh, no, no, there's... There's a reason. There's 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 a there's a reason. There, there is actually going to be an open discussion um, session from one uh, t to two, and so um, you must sit there and 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 we will converse. Um, um, uh, let me open up um, the discussion. I'm sure there there are comments, um, uh, questions. Um, uh, can I begin, Yehuda? I I, uh, I uh, in my adulthood. I would have lived through at least two of these waves. I can't remember when the, when the, the, the first wave was. Now, I don't, I don't dismiss the, the research at the Institute for Contemporary Jewelry. Frankly, some of my best friends are, are there. I've co-authored books with, with your colleagues. I, I, I love the, the place, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, uh, I, 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 I hold the scholarship in great regard. I, 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 I don't, um, the, 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 the final remarks seemed to some extent at, at variance at least as I understood them, with, with um, the astonishingly uh, measured, characteristically measured analysis that you gave us of Judeophobia over the course of 3,000 years. What do you mean by these waves, the waves that have transpired, the waves that will transpire? We know I, I live uh, on the California coast, and I know there are waves, and there are waves. Uh, 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 um, uh, how... Yehuda Bauer, how wet will we get? <laughs> the research was done not at the Institute of Contemporary Jewelry, but at the um, Center for the Study of Antisemitism. Ben Sasson. By, yes, by a, um, a researcher by the name of Simcha Epstein. And uh, I'd be happy to uh, send you the, uh, the research. By wave, he means the... Uh, <coughs> phenomenon of an increase in a number of measurements. Uh, he measured, according to official statistics, in a large number, in a number of countries, not just um, um, America and uh, France and so on, but in a large number of countries, uh, articles, um, anti-Jewish articles, uh, anti-Jewish um, uh, actions, um, anti-Jewish <clears throat> statements, and that kind of thing. The interesting thing that each, in each country the measurements are slightly different, but the graphs are the same. Whichever way you measure it, more or less the same kind of figures appear, the same kind of or percentage-wise uh, uh, increase or decrease appears. Um, and the, the fascinating thing about this is that when you have something arising in Stockholm and in Buenos Aires at the same time, roughly at the same time within a couple of months or so, uh, you feel that at least uh, the ground was uh, receptive to such propaganda. Uh, that he calls a wave. Now a wave because it peaks and then it goes down. Uh, the last one uh, that uh, uh, peaked, say, 1991, 92, and then <clears throat> went down in 93, and then continued sort of equally, and then now it goes down even more. Uh, I think that shows that uh, there is something within what we call Western society or Northern society that is uh, that produces these things and that the society then, in a way, half accepts it or perhaps quarter accepts it. The uh, analysis of Simcha Epstein is uh, so interesting because, as you may imagine, he started out with the opposite assumptions. And he arrived at these uh, 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 conclusions uh, really not very willingly. And 
you know, it destroys your uh, research work when you uh, suddenly are confronted by the fact that the uh, main cause of what you think, I mean, what you thought was the main cause, at least doesn't always apply. I think that's the minimum that one can say. Okay. Um, yes. One of the things that puzzles me about anti-Semitism is its um, presence in a place like Japan, where um, I don't think they probably ever see a Jew. Well, I mean, there are probably a few Jews there, but not very many. And there's no Catholic, there's no Christian um, heritage. And yet there was this enormous outbreak. They, they published the, uh, the protocols of the elders of Zion in, in Japanese, and it was a big bestseller. What, what's that all about? There is a uh, um, professor of uh, Japanese and Japanese culture in Jerusalem by the name of uh, Shiloni, Benami Shiloni. Whenever uh, Japanese groups come, because he <coughs> speaks fluent Japanese and he published his books in Japanese, he accompanies them. So there came this group, you see, and he toured with them in the country and they were very enthusiastic. And they came back, there was a big uh, uh, reception at the Japanese embassy, and the head of the uh, delegation uh, said, Professor Shiloni, you were such a wonderful guide, and so on, we are going to give you a present. And they gave him the protocols of the <laughs> elders of Zion. <laughs> now you see there are, I think you will agree, certain cultural differences. <laughs> <laughs> For the Japanese, the Jews are a demon. In other words, in Japanese society, in Japanese culture, demons are not bad. <clears throat> demons are important. If you get along well with them, then they are on your side. The protocols of the elders of Zion were understood by large numbers of people in Japan as a great compliment to the Jews. And uh, the, the, the result is you want to be on their side. Now, there is true anti-Semitism in Japan. And there has been a, um, a tradition of Jewish scholarship in Japan, I mean, scholarship about Jews since the early 1920s when a, uh, a society uh, 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 was founded in, in, in uh, or rather a department was founded in Tokyo University that dealt with that. Uh, there are one million Christians in Japan. Most of the people who write the real anti-Semitic stuff are Christian Japanese. There are about 75 books, or maybe now 76 books, that <coughs> deal with Jews. The large majority of them are either neutral or positive. But there is a strong minority of anti-Jewish books. Uh, the Jews are interesting for Japanese. Japanese uh, the Japanese middle class, intellectual class, is very curious about the Jews, and because they are very thorough and so on, you find a lot of Japanese intellectuals who learn Yiddish and uh, Hebrew and so on and uh, engage in uh, Jewish uh, 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 subjects. I mean, we've got a Japanese teaching Yiddish at Hebrew University. <laughs> so. Uh, there, there, there is, if you, if, you, if you need it, in fact, a Japanese Yiddish dictionary. Uh, th th there is, uh, actually. Um, um, the, 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 I only know this because an undergraduate student of mine at Stanford did a considerable amount of work on, on, on perceptions of Jews in, 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 ja in Japanese, Japanese culture. The vast majority of the literature, as I understand it, is almost wildly philo-Semitic, and uh, partly in reaction to um, some World War II literature that, that is decidedly not uh, Derek Lois. I should add, before I ask my question, that I had a graduate student at Indiana University who was doing Czech history, a, a Japanese graduate student, who learned fluent Yiddish, and who now insists when he writes to me, he only writes to me in Yiddish. <laughs> Anyway, I do not um, understand. Um, was, that, was, that, was that your comment, Eric? Right, no. You'll say something more constructive? Yeah, that, was <laughs> that was a humorous aside. <laughs> but, but I digress. Um, <laughs> my question is about the uh, radically uh, different forms now of the production and uh, distribution of knowledge over the internet 
and uh, its effects on, uh, on anti-Semitism. I know that once I was surfing the net for information on Israel and found an anti-Semitic uh, web page from Oslo, the post office box in Oslo, and these graphic uh, pictures that were straight out of sort of late 19th century uh, Drummond-esque uh, anti-Semitism. And I was just wondering if people have done let me take a this. few. Uh, let me take a few questions, and then uh, uh, Lois and Yehuda on that. Well, one of my questions, I think, piggybacks on, uh, on Derek. Um, how do you think the, uh, the existence of the State of Israel and anti-Zionism complicates the picture um, you've presented? And uh, my second question is, you spoke um, in wonderfully measured ways about uh, continuities and yet uh, innovation in modern um, racist anti-Semitism. Yet, I think I noted that throughout you used the term anti-Semitism to refer to the pre-modern phenomena as well. I, I spoke about it before you came in. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm very <laughs> sorry. Lois, lo, lo, at tomorrow's meeting, we hope Lois will come on time. Uh, 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 most, um, of, uh, most of the time, it's uh, my fault, but right. this time it wasn't. Let's leave it uh, at that. <laughs> uh, uh, Yaakov. Uh, among the many, many important remarks that you made was the one that we uh, should not believe that the history of the Jews is a history of persecution. And that this is actually the real reclaiming, I think, of Jewish history and the changing of the teaching of Jewish history by uh, stop, by, by, by changing the direction, changing the orientation. And instead of uh, telling the history of persecution, telling the history of the Jews and the history of the culture of the Jews. Don't you think that uh, most of the Holocaust studies, which in many cases come instead of uh, studies of Judaism in the modern age, and not as part of Judaism in the modern age, and don't you, doesn't it uh, underline this uh, orientation of uh, Judaism uh, portrayed in the light of persecution. Don't you think that we should include in the uh, Holocaust studies the study of the culture that was destroyed by the Holocaust? Because after all, the Holocaust destroyed not only the lives of so many Jews, but it destroyed whole cultures, the Yiddish culture, the German culture, uh, in, in Europe, the Russian, the Polish culture, the Czechoslovakian, the Hungarian, the Romanian. I mean, in all these places, there was a great flourishing of Jewish culture, which came to a peak in the beginning of the 20th century and was destroyed and stopped by the Holocaust. Uh, let me go uh, remark by remark. Uh, I know that there are some studies now uh, afoot uh, regarding the spread of anti-Semitism in the Internet. Uh, we made such a study as well at the uh, Center for the Study of Anti-Semitism. And um, uh, we found that one of the things we don't really know is how many people actually read this and how far is this distributed and whether people who uh, get across that page, say, oh, this is just rubbish and pass on, or whether they think that this is very important. So this is something I cannot answer, but I th I'm fully aware of it, and I think that this is something that one has got to go into as the propaganda spreads. By the way, also counter-propaganda, so it's not just that. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the second uh, point about anti-Zionism is, is, I think, uh, very important. It's of course, included in the paper that you didn't hear. <laughs> uh, you see, you can be an anti-Zionist without being an anti-Semite. Anti-Zionist in the sense that you say that you don't, you are against nationalism, you don't want any people to have its own national state. And then you can say that you are against the Jews, but you are uh, that, that you are against the, uh, the, the Jews having a state, but not against the Jews. But it's rather difficult. Because if you are an anti-Zionist, then you say, in, in the sense that the anti-Zionists understand Zionism, not the way I understand Zionism, but in the way they understand Zionism, you are against the existence of the state of Israel. Then if you are against the existence of, the, of Malaysia, then you are an anti-Malay. If you are against the existence of the state of France, then you are anti-French. 
If you are against the existence of the state of the Jewish state, you are anti-Jewish, you are anti-Semitic. In that general sense, which Lois didn't hear, but I explained that it was, uh, that I, I was using consciously a wrong, a wrong term. No, no, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not trying to go into this again. Uh, uh, so I think anti-Zionism is largely a form of anti-Semitism, largely, not totally. But you see, there are places where this becomes very, very clear. The major threat to Jews today comes from Muslim fundamentalism. And Muslim fundamentalism is rampant in a large number of states, even those that have relations with us. And in those states, you can see the immediate transition from being anti-Zionist, that is anti-Israel, and anti-Jewish. This is very marked, for instance, in a relatively liberal country like Egypt, very marked. This is now even stronger uh, in, uh, in the case of Jordan. Now, do we add something to this? In other words, is, do Jews or Israelis uh, have a part in this? Are they responsible for part of this reaction? I think yes. In other words, certain <coughs> Israeli policies certainly advance anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. I think the most recent flap in Jordan is a very good case in point. But there, there were others before. Does that mean that if there were no flaps and there was a completely different policy, there would be no anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism in the Arab world? I don't think so. I think it would. I think we had it during the Rabin Peres period as well. We had it much weaker than we have it now, but we had it. So I think that one has to, again, to differentiate. There's an underlying stratum, which has been there since late 19th century, early 20th century in the Arab world, which has adopted anti-Semitic images and theories from Europe, added them to certain anti-Jewish traditions in the Islamic world and created a mix that is terribly, terribly dangerous. Fundamentalism generally does these things because in India, if you look at the Indian situation, Indian fundamentalism today is violently and murderously anti-Muslim. And if they come to power, which they well might, uh, there would be probably a terrible situation in India. So fundamentalisms <coughs> generally, including the Jewish one, are potentially murderous movements. Now, uh, to Yaakov's question, uh, I never teach the Holocaust without uh, dealing with pre-Holocaust Jewish culture. And I uh, uh, advocate uh, that attitude to anyone who does teach the Holocaust. Uh, many of the people who deal with Holocaust studies, in fact, do that all over. In this country, you have many hundreds of courses delivered on the Holocaust, and many of them do deal with pre-Holocaust Jewish culture. So this is something that we have learned. I must say that the Holocaust is not the Jewish identity. It's part of the Jewish identity. It cannot be removed from the Jewish identity, because as Sir Edmund Hillary said about Mount Everest, and the reason why he climbed it, it's there. And this is something that affects us directly, vitally. The Jewish people is a different people after the Holocaust. One doesn't have to go into that. But it is also a universal sta universalist statement. You cannot deal with modern history without that. And so I am against memorials. I am against putting the memory of the Holocaust in statues, buildings, bricks, mortar. I'm in favor of putting it in education and knowledge. But I, 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 I cannot uh, oppose uh, somebody who wants to memorialize the whole. I can't, I can't do that. I was part of the uh, uh, team that set up the museum in Washington. I opposed the museum in Washington. I said, I oppose it, but I'll be, if you already do it, do it right. So I was part of that. And uh, uh, the new New York uh, Museum of Heritage, which I haven't seen yet, seems to be uh, the same kind. It's a repetition of the same things. And what you do in this country, and this is something really peculiarly American, 
uh, and understandable from the point of view of the realities in which you live. In a Jewish community in somewhere, in Idaho, I don't know whether there are any Jewish communities there. <laughs> <laughs> they say, well, we do the Holocaust twice a year, you know, Kristallnacht commemoration and the Holocaust Memorial Day commemoration, and we are free of this stuff for 363 day, days a year. And if you want to do Holocaust, go to Washington. And I think that this is very dangerous. Uh, you don't deal with a trauma, and we are a traumatized society. You don't, we are, you don't deal with a trauma by putting it under the carpet. You have to deal with it. As I said, in my view, try to do it, deal with it realistically, demythologizingly, and uh, 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 nevertheless dance and sing and have your normal celebrations because you have to continue to live. There are no lessons from the Holocaust. There are no lessons. Each person that confronts this draws her or his own conclusion from this. There's no meaning to the Holocaust. The only meaning that it could have had is the meaning that it had for the perpetrators. For the Jews, it has no meaning. It was murder. Murder has no meaning except for the fact that it is murder. And that's a long answer to Yaakov's short question. <laughs> We're going to, uh, to break now. I do want to tell, please remain seated just for a moment. Just take me a minute to do the announcement. Um, I want to tell all of you who will be here tomorrow, those living in uh, the Detroit area or those who would like to remain, that tomorrow night at 8.30 as part of the Humanist Forum of the Birmingham Temple, that Yehuda will be speaking about the present situation in Israel. So. Uh, if you were planning to leave today and would like to stay, you can make your plane arrangements accordingly. But uh, it's going to be 8.30 tomorrow evening. And I do want to say to that with regard to Japanese learning Yiddish, it's only fair because it's a fair exchange. We Jews have for many years identified Jewish neighborhoods by Chinese restaurants. So, <laughs> And now uh, we'll take a 15-minute break, and then we'll come back.